In this video, I want to talk about how I would approach improving my West Coast swing if I was to do it all over again. Now, improving your West Coast swing can mean different things to different people, depending on where you're at, which level you're at, and what goals do you have? Like, what do you want to achieve? But here's how I would do it if I were to learn West Coast swing again. When I look at improving something, I love to focus, love, love. <laughs> when I go about improving my own dance or when I'm working with people, I love to focus on the things that make the biggest impact on their dancing. Sure, there can be a hundred things you need to fix and your wrist in that position and your weight change there and your hip and give a little more stretch. Like there can be uh, so many things to fix but I love to focus on the most important stuff first. I don't think that is about being lazy. I think that is about being smart in the way you approach things and focus on the stuff that can give you the most impact first. And then if you have more time, you can add on to that. Because I feel like a lot of people are not going to quit their jobs and just go full-time West Coast swing, train dance for 10 hours a day, right? People have stuff going on. You don't have time to spend hours every day practicing so when you do, I think it's important to spend that time as efficiently as possible on the things that can make the biggest difference. So to improve my West Coast swing, I would focus on three things. First of all, I would record myself and get feedback. Then I would focus on technique. And lastly, I would focus on musicality. The first step I would take to improve my West Coast swing was to get a coach. Start working with someone regularly because that is really going to hold you accountable and make sure that you put the work in and guide you along the way. Now, what's great about today's world is that you can film yourself and your coach can live anywhere on the world, on the world, around the world. <laughs> they, they can live anywhere because you can send them videos and they can send you videos back and you can get feedback and you can work with someone without them having to be there. I remember when I started dancing, I had been dancing for six months and I was helping a teacher out. I was being a dance dummy at the end of a class and I was just leading the patterns which she was teaching. And I had seen, I'd watched a lot on YouTube. I saw a lot of cool stuff. And in my head, I was doing this, I had this nice chest movement going on in my, during my anchor step. And when I watched that video recap, when some of the friends sent it to me, I was just in shock. I, I, I didn't realize how I actually looked dancing. I only had the feeling. <laughs> and the, the feeling was so much better than, the act than how it actually looked. So it's a good idea to film yourself. Now that you have that film, you want to send that to someone who knows what they're talking about and can give you some feedback on what you need to improve. First of all, technique, let's define it as how well you do what you do. It's not about what you do, it's just like about how well you dance the stuff that you do. So I would start off with mastering the basics within technique. Having a decent posture, stepping on time and finishing the weight transfers, and having an understanding of tension compression, like connection in general, how to lead, how to follow. Once you master the basics, I find that there are a few things that you can do that just really makes a huge difference in your dancing. There are three ways of shifting weight from one leg to another, usually there's only the first version where you're like stepping normally in between the legs that is being taught. So I would work on those. I would work on anchor variations. I would be working on adding like stops and contrast to my movement, level changes and projection. And with those things, like it really elevates your dancing from looking very basic and square to something completely different. I, I got into West Coast Wing watching YouTube. I saw some amazing dancers dance. I was like, wow, I got to try this. And I took my, some classes and then I like, I saw myself dance and I was comparing it to YouTube and I was comparing what we did in class to what I saw on YouTube. And I just, I just it, it didn't match at all. Now, when I see it, I just see that people are doing like anchor variations and different types of one. They're doing like delayed one rhythms and hitches and, and all this stuff that I, but it, I just didn't see the connection, but now I do. And it's like those things that really make you make the the dancers stand out and look way better than if you just do the, the walk, walk, triple, triple. So that's what I would practice within technique. And at the same time of doing that, I would start practicing level three, which is musicality. If there is one topic that I feel like have impacted my own dancing, my competition results, people that I've coached to, to, to do better in competitions, it is definitely musicality. Matching what you do in the dance to the music is a game changer. It makes so much more sense to yourself, matching your movement to the music, to the partner you're dancing with and to, to anyone who's watching. You have to learn musicality. And bonus about musicality is probably the most 
fun thing ever to learn. Now, musicality can mean a lot of things. It's like the word communication, right? It's just, a, it can mean so many different things. So in musicality, on the one hand, every song is like a poem, a story, but on the other hand, it has some sort of science. It's built up and structured quite similarly, similarly, similarly. And there are a lot of patterns within the music. Then you have lyrics, the words they're saying, instruments, the energy of the song, the three types of phrase changes or the four different types of phrase changes that are used in blues. Like there are so many things. Now, because musicality is such a, a big topic, we've created a whole separate video on that, but that one is over at our website, rolfandkorin.com, linked below, so you can check that out. In addition to that, there's another video of me talking about the science of music. I'm breaking it down as a full video covering that. It's like 20 minutes long, but don't worry, you can actually play it at two times speed, <laughs> so it won't take you forever to watch it, but it, it's, a, it's me explaining it as well as I can. So yeah. Link below, check it out. That rounds it up. That's what I would do if I was learning West Coast Swing again. First of all, I would feel myself, get some feedback, get a, get a coach who's telling me what to work on, and I would get that early, and I would stick with it and have regular check-ins. Then I would work on technique, and at the same time, parallel with that, I would start learning musicality, which is probably, after a certain point, the single most important thing you can do to improve your, uh, your dancing. So have a look at the links below and uh, see you in the next one.